Hey everyone, John Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group, SSFTG. Welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at how to utilize the Fibonacci extension tool to locate great target objectives. If you're already long and you're trying to figure out, well, we've already kind of gone past this area, what do I go for, right? This is especially prevalent when we're looking at the NASDAQ continuously pushing all-time highs. Where do we put our target, right? What, what can we use? Well, that's where the Fibonacci extension tool comes in, and that is the F9, Fibonacci extensions right here. That's the tool that I'm going to be using for this. In the primary levels, if you've used Fibonacci before, it shouldn't be much of a surprise. Uh, but if we go into the settings itself, just so you can see what I'm using, we have, they're a little out of whack here, but we've got the 382, the 618, the 100, just to see where a one-to-one -one move is. And then the 1618, the other Fibonacci. So as far as the Fib levels go, these are kind of the two key ones. And this is sort of a, a minor subdivision uh, just to kind of see where potential shorter term areas may be coming in on. Think scalpers for that. Uh, so when I'm drawing these up, how do I draw them up? There's a lot of different ways that we can use these, but I like utilizing the same methodology that I would use from confirmed swings. Now, we just did a video not too long ago about confirmed swings, so reference that one if you need to. But I would be looking at it from the perspective of, let's say as an example, bullish. If I were looking for a long, an obvious swing low to swing high to swing low would be here. That would be a great measurement point from A to B to C, and that would project out where the D point would be. Now, you could also subdivide this down if you were looking a little bit closer. From here to here to here might be one for you. Or even from here to here to here, right? Regardless of the way that you use it, the important part is just understand what portion you're looking at. If I'm measuring this little bitty one right here, the nice thing about ratios and percentages is that it's going to be realistic regardless. It doesn't really matter. So what I want to do is I want to measure from those key swings and I want to go and figure out where the major objectives are for the bulls. So if, let's just take the most obvious example from the bottom to this major swing all the way to the lower portion here. So while the market's migrating its way back up, these are the likely areas where the market will respond. Buyers taking profit or new sellers coming in, etc. The first one's going to be the 382, which you can actually see uh, right there, a bear bar rejected right off of that one. So we can see immediate profit taking at the 382. As the market continues a little bit further, the wick here would denote that it did stall at the 618 momentarily before breaking back through. Once it starts breaking through the 618, the one-to-one -one is the next objective, and that's a full-out one-to-one ABCD move, right? A to B equals C to D. That's your ABCD move right there, and that would be the objective, which you can see it jostled around a little bit. Now, the big one, the, the, the big honker, the Mac Daddy, the one that really pushes back against the market is the 1618. The 1618 is a massive objective that a lot of traders will be looking for. Now, there's nothing wrong with the 618 or the 382. The 100 starts showing a lot more reliability. But the 1618, that thing is like a gigantic brick wall. The market has a very hard time piercing through that 1618 if it hasn't had a break already. So here'd be a great example where they're trying to rotate their way back up. They run into the 382, poke their way through. The next objective area would be the 618. Next objective would be the 100. And the one after that, I mean, obviously the previous swing high might tell you to go a little bit sooner, but the 1618 would be the next objective just ahead of 15,000. Now, again, we can subdivide this into smaller ratios as well. Let's say as an example, I was a shorter term trader and I liked this reversal up and maybe I bought into the pullback, you know, over here. And I'm trying to figure out where to take some profit targets. Well, the most likely profit targets on the way back up would be the 618 and then the 100 and then the 1618 if it kept going. In this case, it didn't keep going, uh, but those would be the primary objective points on the way. And you could also subdivide it into the next one right here. Maybe we have a little bit of a larger one. Same concept, 382, 618. Those are the likely objectives if you were in soon enough. And if you're looking for a larger pattern, that's typically where when they start reaching out to the 1618, things get a little bit crazy. Let's go backward a little more. We are in a 125 tick. So let's slow this down just a bit to like a 500 tick just so we can have a bit of a better idea of what's going on. So looking at, uh, well, we already kind of looked at today's price action. Let's go back to yesterday's. Uh, and yesterday's price action, we had this really strong drive down and then a, an inverted head and shoulders out of, out of nowhere reverse this thing back up to the highs. So where is the market likely going to find support on this dive down for traders to take profit? We're probably going to find support at the 382 and the 618. And if it wanted to go further, the 100 and the 1618 all the way down. Those are the major objectives on the low side. Now, if I were looking for objectives on the upside, we've got another very obvious one. 
right up here. And this is a great example of when the market does finally achieve a 1618, why I have all eyes and ears paying attention. Because these 1618s are vicious when it does finally make it. And it doesn't always make it. Sometimes they'll fall short. This could have been the top right here. But when you see them running into this 1618 way, way up here and stalling out, that's a really big clue that if I were long, I might want to start closing up shop a little bit here. And if I weren't in a position already, shorts may be trying to take back over. Be careful getting into earlier going counter trend on a profit target area, though. It does need to have a few other levels of interest to really help it out. So maybe it's a fluke, right? Maybe it's a tick chart thing. So let's look at a 15-minute chart on gold, right? We'll look at a 15-minute chart on gold and see what's going on here. Uh, same concept. We'll look at the most obvious swing highs and swing lows. And this one's a little bit funky. So this is a great example, actually. Uh, from the downside, we've got this really obvious swing, but then nothing really inside of here until they finally started breaking out. So that would tell us then that the downside objective would be all the way down here, all the way up to that high, because that is the highest point that the market went. And when it reaches out to the 1618, lo and behold, that's where the market decided to put in a bottom and started trying to reverse it back up again. Be pay very, very close attention to how the market is responding to those 1618s because they can act as a ridiculously strong reversal area uh, or at the very least a fantastic profit target ahead of a relatively large dip. So hopefully you find that useful, interesting, entertaining, something you can add to your tool belt because the 1618 when you're looking at the FIB extension tool for targets, man, when you start getting up into those areas, they're fantastic targets along the way, but the 1618, that one's just got a special spot, right? That's got a really nice reversal shot to try to get that move going back in the other direction or potentially at least stop the move from going any further. And that would mean that if I were long, as an example, it'd be a good time to get out. Either way, that's something that uh, I look at constantly throughout the day, and I'm looking at where these objectives lie and to see, are they still open? Do we, do we still have some room? Are we at a major 1618? Do I need to be careful? Lots of information that you can get from that. If you have any questions about it, of course, shoot me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Until the next one, enjoy, rest up, and we'll talk to you all then. Thanks.